Hi everybody and welcome to the Mozilla place, <laughs> the great place for Mozilla. Uh, so tonight we do a, a meetup uh, during the We Share Labs camp. So it's uh, two days around uh, sharing economy uh, through the technology angle. And so we have great people here to discuss Mark, about the, how to solve a uh, nowadays problem yeah, with uh, technology. And so we have around uh, 10 projects here that will uh, quickly present their, what they are working on. And also, at the end, if you have uh, something to, um, to show, you are also invited to, to come and uh, present your project. And so we will start with uh, Tristan, that is now working uh, with Cozy. And uh, yeah, I just put the website. Oh, my board, check nice. one, two. <laughs> All right, so just in case I don't remember what my company does. Um, my name is uh, Tristan Nito. Um, I work for a company called uh, Cozy Cloud. That's uh, cozy.io, C-O-Z-Y.io. Um, as you can see, uh, Cozy is a personal cloud solution. What we do is software, um, software that you can run on... Uh, uh, a computer at home that is connected to the internet. Um, it will be your server and it will be uh, your personal cloud. So instead of uh, storing your data, uh, your email, your contacts, uh, your calendar on uh, Google servers or Apple server and, and such, um, generally for free, because they want your data, and this is exactly why they offer you uh, uh, services, just like a just like a honeypot, you know, uh, which is uh, encouraging you uh, over to come, and you, you think you're enjoying the honey, and actually you're gonna get get captured, and your data is being captured in exchange of a very inexpensive service. So you can run these services yourself. Um, and your data is safe because it is on a computer that you can control. Uh, this computer is running the Cozy software, which is open source, so you can customize it. Uh, and we, Cozy, cannot uh, lock you in because it's open source uh, and it's on your uh, computer. Uh, we have a range of applications, uh, email, calendaring, uh, contacts, photos and files, uh, and it's a platform, so if you're interested, you can develop applications that you will be able to share for other people uh, to install on their uh, Cozy. Basically, it's a new kind of, uh, of computing device. Uh, you had the personal computer, you have the smartphone, and now you have the personal server where you can host uh, your data. We, uh, I won't be able to stay, but I have two colleagues of mine uh, is only two, maybe more. Uh, raise your hand, Alexi, say hi. So if you have questions, uh, feel free to go and ask them because I'm sorry, but I have to leave. Thank you very much. Uh, the next project, Inventaire. So hi, I'm Maxime. I'm developing the Inventor project. So it's all about keeping an inventory of your books and opening this inventory uh, to your friends and community and to let you discover the books uh, 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 nearby. So answering two questions. Uh, I want this book. What, uh, how can I get it to, uh, by my friends or by my network? or by the local librarian, anything but Amazon, somehow. <laughs> and the other question is, oh, my friends have books, uh, so let's find some idea for what I, have, I will read next. So that's for the user part. That's the, the experience I want to, to, to offer. And, but behind, uh, behind it, there is kind of a, a, a stronger uh, um, um, opinion, or a stronger fight. It's to, to empower the transition 
uh, by mapping resources with open knowledge and linked data. Uh, everything is open source, and I try to find ways to, re to give back the control and the data to the user uh, by various ways, uh, like uh, for the moment, just downloading a raw JSON or using PowerGDB replications, things like that. Uh, the current status is experimental, and you are very welcome to join helping to find uh, new ways to make it a great project by coding, design, translating, or just sharing the information. Thank you. Were you playing a video well, just now, Tony? If I know how to use a Mac. Well, so this is it. I want to have the full screen. Where do there? Mark, I was not. No, I was. So I have been coming. Jon, my name, of and sent by TransferMap to WeShare Labs Camp and WeShare Fest because uh, last year in March we started off with a 14 MMM, which was the mapping meeting in Munich where a broad range of actors from collective economies came together to initiate a process which aims at mapping all alternative economies. And we break it down nowadays to the sentence like transfer map is a techno-social architecture to visualize the commons transition, which has a global aim. And we try... Um, to, to work on several pillars. One thing is currently creating an open street map compliant taxonomy which can be used on their website. And we are also mapping many different mapping projects. So currently we have 241 maps in our database and we are trying to bring them together in any way possible. And also right now we are running um, the mapping month May 2015. Does this work? And um, you are kindly invited to join us for the workshop at WeShare Fest on Friday 2 p.m. around uh, mapping alternative economies like solidarity economy, uh, welfare economy, and collective um, or collaborative economies and the likes. Um, you are highly uh, invited to, to join our discourse where um, most of the activities are being held out in the public so there's some kind of transparency about the discussions that uh, run within the fields of Mapping Month May, community building, cooperating systems, uh, the craftswomanship which was originally called engineering and discussions around vocabularies and data leading to um, linked data compliant ontologies eventually. Thank you. Hello, I'm Marco Sabatello. I'm one of the contributors on the Freedom Box open source project. The idea behind Freedom Box is a little bit similar to what we heard about Cozy Cloud and also the Internet Cube, which is here. So the basic idea is it's a it's a personal server, it's a personal computer. I have one, one prototype here. It has a pretty design even. And uh, yeah, the idea is it's a, it's a device, you plug it in at home and it helps you protect your privacy, protect you from surveillance and basically take control of your online identity and, and personal data. So it's the opposite idea of the, of the cloud rather than instead of having our data controlled by Google, Facebook and so on, you have a box at home. And uh, it, uh, Freedom Box doesn't invent any new software, so it doesn't produce new software, it just tries to take the best software that is out there for a more open and free and decentralized internet to just take it and make it easy to use because many, many people don't know how to use 
uh, Tor or Diaspora or, or some of these things. So the idea is to have one one box that you just plug in and it, it does those those things for you. And uh, uh, it's it's not available for buying right now. It's still not done. It's an old project, several years old. It has often been criticized for not not being done, but it's making progress. It has maybe five, six, seven functions right now. And, uh, can be a replacement for a Dropbox. You can have your files on the box. It can be a replacement for logging in with Facebook to, to websites. You can have your own personal identity provider. It can be a replacement for Facebook itself by being a decentralized uh, social network, your own node in, in, a, net, in, a, central, in, a, in a social network, and, and so on, and other, uh, a few other features. So I'll, I'll do some demonstration tomorrow. Thank you. Claude? No. No? Hi. Um, so I will, yeah, I'm going to show you the brick uh, as the, in French it's la brick and internet, but we chose to call it internet cube in, in English. It's more relevant. The idea is uh, that uh, we wanted to provide a uh, plug-and-play uh, home server uh, in order to host your services at home, a bit like uh, Freedom Box and, um, and Cozy and uh, stuff like that. Uh, but to achieve this, we used uh, the partnership with FFDN, which is a federation uh, FDN in France and in Europe. Uh, the idea is the, the French uh, the Federation uh, is uh, giving you a VPN access that is directly configured on your uh, on your uh, on your box on your cube so that uh, your cube has an IP address and is uh, available immediately uh, in uh, on the internet uh, so the cool thing about it is uh, uh, there is two sides. The first one is that, uh, yes, your, your, your server is available with all your services uh, instantly. And the second part is that you are using your, your cube to, you can connect to your cube in, on Wi-Fi with uh, Wi-Fi and you are using your uh, ISP, your non-profit ISP as a uh, network provider, which uh, allows you to avoid surveillance on your uh, commercial uh, ISP. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I, uh, yeah, I may have uh, uh, forgot some, uh, some things, but if you have some questions, I'm right there. Thank you. <laughs> the website is in uh, French, by the way, so. We need to translate it. Hi everybody, uh, I'm uh, Guillaume and uh, I'm part of, the pro of a project that is called uh, Virtual Assembly. Uh, so uh, I won't uh, uh, try to explain the, the whole project, uh, but uh, basically uh, it's a, a project of uh, distributed social networks uh, based on semantic web technologies that we are co-building with uh, a number of actors that are here and uh, uh, with other actors that are not here. Uh, and uh, the objective is to uh, facilitate uh, the cooperation, the, co the collaborations between projects, actors, ideas, and resources that are involved in the transition uh, 
so um, uh, our first uh, objective will be to uh, empower uh, the events and the actors that are mobilizing uh, uh, against uh, the climate uh, change during the COP21 that will uh, happen uh, in uh, December in Paris. So current, cur currently we are working with a number of uh, NGOs uh, and uh, actors of the French civil society uh, and uh, with one in particular that is called Co Coalition Climat 21 in French, Climate uh, Coalition. Uh, this organization brings together uh, uh, a bit more uh, than uh, 100 organizations uh, and uh, among these organizations there are some ones like uh, Greenpeace or uh, WWF or uh, MSF etc etc uh, so the objective is to build an application a web application which will allow uh, these actors to manage uh, the events and to build uh, uh, on semantic web technologies uh, the, the, the programs and to share it with the citizens uh, but also uh, uh, this application uh, web application will allow uh, uh, them to um, uh, invite the, uh, the public to uh, map uh, geographically and semantically uh, their project actors ideas and resources uh, to the Document to uh, yes to documentate I don't know uh, what will happen during the event and uh, also uh, the objective of this web application is to allow um, uh, the people to uh, present their resources uh, their offer and demands of resources uh, in order to uh, facilitate uh, matching between offer and demands uh, during. Uh, the mobilization and after the mobilizations um, beyond the events and the organizations so to facilitate collaborations uh, between the uh, organizations and people involved uh, uh, into the transition and uh, against the climate change and so we use for that uh, semantic web uh, technologies and uh, uh, this will allow an interoperability between the events that will happen during the COP and uh, between organizations and people that will mobilize uh, during this uh, uh, mobilization. Thanks. Cheers. Hi, my name is Daniel Harris, and I'm from an organization called Kendra Initiative. We're a non-profit organization based out of the UK, <clears throat> but with lots of people all over the place. Um, imagine a world where if we wanted to collaborate on something, we didn't have to set up a company and then set up a bank account. Imagine that we could just come together, design something, or create a song, or, or a movie, and we would own rights in that movie. And this happens a lot within the music industry, but it's very kludgy. So what we want to do is create an application, an open source reference implementation, and a protocol to build an open value network for the media industry. In actual fact, it's really about creating an open value network, um, distributed open value network, but we're using the media industry as a, as a way to get in. Just very briefly, what we've got here is, the, is a, a song, Stairway to Heaven, mapped out with the rights. You can see the composition and um, the uh, performance rights there. And you can see all the people that played on this, on this song. And then we can divide, divide this up in various different ways. Um, what's very interesting in what we're doing is, well, I, I would say that, wouldn't I? Um, is that we are able to take samples, which are used quite a lot in music, and then take samples of samples of samples and still drill down. So here we have a song that is made up just of samples, and you can't see any people there, but our algorithm can drill down into 
those samples and find out the legal entities involved. And this could be applied to building uh, um, a, a chair or designing a chair or, or anything like that and, and um, create a really dynamic marketplace. And I'd say that's pretty much it. And yeah, thank you. I'm around, come and speak to me if you're vaguely interested. So I'm Pierre, I'm working for in the hosters. And here the problem we want to solve is, as usual, um, yeah, a lot of people are using Facebook and Dropbox and Google. And we know that it's really bad for many reasons, for spying, to be in control of your data, for uh, censorship. And so uh, luckily, uh, there is a lot of alternatives to this uh, proprietary software in the cloud. And uh, these are free software. And, but unfortunately, as a user, as an end user, uh, it's really difficult experience. So I will just show you quickly how does it work. Uh -huh. hmm. so, uh, so as an end user, if you want uh, to, have, to host your files in the cloud, most of them are going to Dropbox. And do you know what's a call to action? It's a marketing term. So a call to action is the main uh, button on the website. And so here you see this is the, the continue, this is the register button. So you fill, you fill the full name, email address, phone number, continue. And then in five seconds, you have your service, right? So it's really easy to use proprietary software in the cloud. If you want a free software alternative, a friend might have told you that uh, OnCloud is providing it. And you go to their website, and what is the main call to action here? Hmm? Yeah, so this is a download button. The issue is that you just want the service. You don't want to know what to do with these files. Because if you click on this download button, you will have zip file, you have to find a server, you have to set up your domain name, certificate. It's really complicated steps until you get the service. And we at Indie Hosters, we want to ease this process and to make one button that is uh, registered with Indie Hosters for every free software. And then it will be really easy for end user to use free software in the cloud. So this is our ID. And <laughs> so if you want uh, to know more information, uh, you can check the website or get in touch uh, afterward uh, during the drinks. Thank you. <laughs> so Utah, do you want to present provenance? Cool. Oh, can I uh, take another? Sorry. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's on the stick. Mm. Ah, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's mm. just a few pictures. Uh. Ah, cool. Is that making it loud? Mm. Uh. Maybe here on the green. Here on the green button. Ah, cool. Cool? Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a project um, I've been involved with. It's called. Uh, it's a. It's a startup in London, a social business called Provenance. Um, so what's what's this about? So who of you supports slavery? One. <laughs> who of you knows that your T-shirt was not made by slaves? I, I know that it was made by slaves. Right. <laughs> uh, that's a picture from the uh, Bangladesh garment um, factory that collapsed. So, um, like, the motivation is that there's more to, to products than, than just the looks and the price of a product. So um, that's what we're trying to kind of um, um, help people to grasp and, and build, like, take more informed decisions when they purchase stuff. Um, 
because like what's green, what's sustainable, there are labels, but like in the end, what, what's behind it? So um, I don't know, like, and as I started kind of digging deeper into this, became even less clear what's behind a label and, and what, what can we know actually about stuff. Um, but so transparency is really important, but, but is really difficult. And, and like what central centralized organization could we trust in order to do that? Because there are so many interests involved. Um, and yeah, um, there, there is kind of no central organization that, that could do that as we have seen. So, um, it's a bit, yeah, <laughs> until blockchains came. So what we're trying to do is kind of using decentralized um, computing in the form of blockchains to build a decentralized applications, uh, application to track um, materials and, and kind of do digital certification that's fully transparent where you can track things to the um, beginning to their creation um, throughout the supply chain in order um, yeah, to achieve end-to-end -end transparency and, as I said, more informed decisions um, when we're purchasing. So, yeah, because uh, yeah, that's our motivation. And also kind of how to set up a system like this on Ethereum. Like somebody wants to know how to do decentralized certification. You're welcome. So the planned project party is uh, is over now. So if any of you has any project to they want to present, you are free to come. I actually have one already. I will just show you how to do. <laughs> so Yeah, so with a bunch of friends, we started a website some weeks ago because uh, when we discuss about online privacy, we always get to this I have nothing to hide argument. And so we wanted to fight that. And actually, by discussing with friends, we noticed also that they don't even know that they're under mass surveillance. So we tried to set up a simple website with a simple interface. And so, yeah, there is one big question. Do you know that you are being watched? And so if you click yes, you go to the next step. And if you click no, we give you arguments. So here is about digital fingerprint. We link to a lot of uh, interesting materials. Like here, the great thing is that if you didn't check this documentary, you should tonight, definitely. It's really great, made by Arte. It's really amazing uh, material. And so, huh? yeah. And uh, so then, at one point, you get convinced by your arguments. You go to the next uh, question. Do you have something to hide? Is anybody in the room have nothing to hide? And we have discussions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have nothing to hide. Then we give you arguments that uh, you should have something to hide. Uh, so then, tomorrow I can come to your house and check everything, right? Because you have nothing to hide. You don't have a house. <laughs> Do you have a bag with you? Can I check your online history? <laughs> can I have your email passwords? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, about rules are changing. Anyway, and then if you get convinced, you get uh, to a toolbox that we created. It's a work in progress, so it's not perfect. And, but it's uh, just, we try to have uh, 11 steps right now. Because usually when you have this discussion, some people are saying, okay, if you want to protect your online privacy, you should install Linux, have your personal server, quit Facebook and Dropbox, but until then, you are not protecting anything. And people are like, okay, this is not for me. And so the idea here is to have one first step that is really easy, install Firefox, and then you are on the way to change yourself and improve yourself. And so, yeah, of course, the first step is install Firefox, and the last step is have your server at home. But uh, you're on the way, and you know the path, more or less, to, to go until there. And so, yeah, you are welcome to help on this project. <laughs> Do you want to project? Uh... Yes. 
is the demo. And uh, is this uh, is this Firefox? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, so I just wanted to do a demo of some of the applications on the platform. Um, um, if we go to linked data dot um, uh, github dot io uh, slash sign up. Okay, so this is a this is an application that was uh, I haven't tried it in Firefox. So I wonder if there's a Chrome here. I have to. Um, uh, oh yeah. Okay, so we'll see how well this works. Um, so you, you know, you know, GitHub.io is a completely pure uh, uh, server, um, a really dumb server. They try to. The reason you can't publish uh, JavaScript on GitHub is because there were denial of service attacks. People writing JavaScript. You have the, the problem of uh, of. Uh, JavaScript entering one uh, on one domain that can interact with JavaScript on another. So they made um, uh, they allowed people to publish their uh, content on on this service, and so it has very little uh, it has very little information. But this is a JavaScript application where you can click on sign up. So you could, for example, here uh, say we're going to create a, an account name for um, for WeShare. Um, full name, okay, whatever. Um, we share fest, we share labs. Um, all right, so I don't know what an email is. I'm just going to put my uh, email here for the moment. And um, if I could, I put a picture or URL. And here's an interesting tab where you can decide for the moment, you can decide where you want to store your data. So there's two options. You can store it on uh, databox.me, which is, uh, or on readwriteweb.io. These are two implementations of the LDP protocol. Um, ideally, you could put it on your Freedom Box, right? So this is the uh, you could you could specify the URL to your Freedom Box and and just store the information there. And then you can uh, all right. Uh, it's going to check if there's a public key. There's none, so we're going to create this uh, this storage service there. And there you've got it. Uh, well, all right, so uh, this is why I have to do this with uh, Chrome. This is weird. So this is uh, this is the X509 certificate, but um, what is this one? Uh, it's a nightly build of uh, Firefox. All right, weird. Hmm? Uh, no right. So we uh, so so the question is that this thing doesn't allow you to save the certificate right um, in in your keychain. Yeah. You save file, but. Okay. So this is this is not the way it's done in. But then, how do you install it in your Chrome uh, certificate? Hmm. Uh, okay. Well. Or dealing with a, this is why I should have checked with them. Um, um, all right, so this is it's not going to be easy to do the demo. There's another. There's another. I think it's easier if you if you play with this yourself. Um, there's a profile editor you can go to right after that. Same same URL, and the source code is all on linkdata.github.io for people who do JavaScript. And here you can. Um, all right, so here here for example. Let's imagine that there's a certificate. I'm going to click on it. It will find out my web ID, and all of this will happen. You'll notice this in your browsers. So um, if you have problems, you can just come to me. So one was sign up, and the other one was profile-editor. And if you go to the link, uh, GitHub link, you'll see a whole bunch of projects. Um, so I'm going to put my own uh, web ID in here. Uh, of course, this is not what you, sh you should never be typing uh, your web ID because it should be in the certificate that we downloaded. OK, so. But here I'm going to this um, uh, service. It's JavaScript. It's fetching my, uh, my information from my profile and showing it here. And so what you want to do is this, is this would allow people here to write uh, applications that people can test on their own linked data server, on their Freedom Box, on their, which was, was the other box here? Was it yours? Internet Cube or the, uh, the, the, the third one. Um, 
to, to see what, if, if they like the interface. And then, of course, the idea would be to put this interface onto the linked data platform so that when you go to this URL and you follow links, you get the UI if you don't have a UI. But really what you'd also like to do is go to your home uh, internet queue box and, um, and browse the whole web through your user interface. If you like this color, then you, can, uh, then you could ideally browse the whole social network this way. So here we don't have a social network uh, uh, browser, but this would be easy to, to do. Um, I think he has an edit button. Well, he used to have an edit button so that if it knew that you could edit it, uh, because there was no data, these fields transform. So if you create a profile on your server, you'll be able to edit it, add fields, and, and so on. It's nicely done. There's, this is a huge, there's a lot of work to be done, right? Because you can imagine this is, uh, this is one person working at, at, at MIT, but he did his doctorate here in Paris at the uh, Paris uh, Telecom. Um, and, uh, you know, you can, you can imagine uh, all kinds of apps like this, telephone apps and, and so on. And so then you can store your data securely on your server, link it to other people, uh, uh, and, uh, and have essentially distributed Facebook. So this is the... These are the kind of apps I, I, I recommend looking at if you want to play with it. Um, and I haven't done any of this. I'm trying to do this stuff in Scala.js um, on the client because I don't like JavaScript, but that's my preference. So thank you. Does anybody have anything to present? You want to? Hmm? No? Yeah. As you want. Do you want terms of service? Yeah. Allez. So when you sign up for a, a website, then um, you always have to check the box and say, I have read the terms of service and I agree. And uh, then, then you say yes to that and then you can sign up. And if you don't tick the box, then you can't sign up. So obviously what you do is you read the terms of service, right? Because other, it's, you have to say that you read them. Well, that's obviously the biggest lie of the web because nobody ever reads them. And that's a problem because it's uh, part of the power uh, this equality between the big services and the users. And if nobody ever reads them, then they can write anything they want. And it turns out that that's what they do. Uh, so for instance, if you post something to Twitter, then after that, you cannot uh, display a tweet somewhere else without referring it in the Twitter uh, layout so that everybody sees that is a tweet. So it's something I write suddenly becomes something that um, belongs to Twitter and of which Twitter can say, this is how you style a tweet, even though the words are mine. And there's even, if you post a photo to Twitter, and you use a tool to upload the photo, for instance, TwitPic. I think now you can just upload it directly with the Twitter app. But um, with TwitPic, uh, somebody saw uh, an airplane land on, uh, in New York on the Hudson River, and he took a photo of it, and he uploaded it, and he used TwitPic as a tool to get the photo from his phone to Twitter. And then the next day in the newspaper, you saw photos, and in, under the photo, it said TwitPic, whereas TwitPic was all the, they could have, might as well have said, uh, copyright uh, Nokia or Samsung or whatever phone he used. So and that was also in our terms of service. So what we did, um, we thought, oh, there must be something we can do, right? Because there is um, 30 or 40 years ago, they invented um, the GPL uh, license to uh, make free software possible. And uh, there must be something like that. So we can just have free terms of service. And we started talking about it. And then we came up with, well, we're just going to um, rate the terms of service. We're just going to read them and say if they're good or bad. So uh, that's what we did. We uh, sat down and we read the terms of service of Google and of uh, Facebook and of... Uh, I, don't, oh, I scroll the other way probably. Yeah. Um, and uh, these are all conclusions. Um, so you can see what we thought was good and what was bad. And then we also gave them a rating. And then, um, yeah, you see that trip we were very... Uh, we didn't find that so nice. So now if you um, install the plugin, um, there's a browser plugin, uh, download browser plugin. Is it okay if I install the browser plugin on your computer? Is it okay if I install the browser plugin on your computer? Just, you can uninstall it later if you want, or keep it. 
<laughs> well, this is all Creative Commons data, and obviously the terms of service is that if you don't agree, then you have to come to the forum and, and add to the discussion. Um, but otherwise, you're, you're free to reuse the data that's on terms of service. So if I now go to twitpick.com, um, I said, I don't know, I don't know, yeah, so I see, oh, see, so oops, I have to look out before I... Uh, um, uh, before I sign up for this page, because there's all these things um, wrong for you. Yeah, Twitter takes credit for your content. Okay, no, no, no I'm not gonna. So then, with this add-on, you still have to officially, of course, you're still uh, yourself responsible to read the terms of service, but at least you can read reviews. Like, so if it's like, if you go to a restaurant, you still have to eat yourself and make up your own opinion if you like it, but you can re read a restaurant review to know which restaurants might be good or might be bad. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can um, join the product. Uh, you can help us to review uh, terms of service, um, and then in the end, these um, everything people say will end up um, here on this website. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. Thank you. Wonderful project. <laughs> You're <all> right. <laughs> okay, show the team. <laughs> yeah, that's in, in real life. <laughs> so if there is no any more project, then we can start the networking part and uh, go to the bar and <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming.